Now joining us in the studio are two Mandela Washington fellows. Fatou Ugwuche is new media consultant at the Independent National Electoral in Nigeria, where she is instrumental in project management, capacity development, and developing strategies for citizen engagement using new and traditional media. Also with us is Langanani Gumbi. He is a supporter and public representative of the Democratic Alliance in South Africa. In 2014, he was elected to the KwaZulu Natal Provincial Legislature as the youngest public official ever elected to the provincial parliament at 24 years old. Thanks to the both of you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So let me start with you, Fatu. The program is coming to, to a close. What has been the experience like? I've had a great experience during this Yali Fellowship. I mean, the, the networks I've built, the connections I've made, the institutions that I have visited that were specific to my interests, and also the other um, Washington Fellows that I met at Howard University who have now become family. Um, I believe, you know, during my six weeks here, I've been able to learn about, you know, international models and best practices for public engagement, which I am only excited to go back home and apply to my work. So I can only wait to be back home and start the work that I intend to do when I get back to Nigeria. That's great. And you, Longanani, what was it like? Thank you very much for having us. Um, it's been an, an amazing journey. And I think that in this program, they've gone above and beyond to make sure that whatever, we, whatever field we're in, we're actually paid to people close to um, that industry. So for instance, I did job shadowing at the mayor's office. Um, I was based in Washington, D.C., where there's um, a lot of institutions uh, which are relevant to me and the field in which I'm in. And uh, I've made so many connections with uh, uh, people across the continent, such as, such as Fats, who are at the same institution as her, uh, and other people in other countries. And I just want to travel. I want to learn about uh, what other people are doing across the continent, um, looking at uh, projects across the borders. And I mean, people are doing amazing stuff. Uh, I got involved in politics at a young age, but some people have built up companies. You know, they're 23 years old and they're managing companies and NGOs. So it's and been definitely awesome. amazing stuff you guys are doing. You ran and got elected at the age of 24. I mean, that's incredible. What prompted you to, to run for parliament? Sure, you know, um, I think I had a, a good support structure within the party that, you know, I, I belong to and which I support. Uh, you know, and in talking to some of the fellows, I realized even some of the political actions that uh, I did, I think started in high school and I got involved, I think that first month I got to university and by the time, you know, a, an election came, they asked me to stand and I, I, I wasn't too sure if I could make it, but uh, somehow I was able to compete and they've created the right environment. Now, South Africa has got uh, a large uh, population of young people. Mm -hmm. So I think there was also that pressure, you know, we're responding to young people uh, young people's needs. I started the student organization at Rhodes. I think we had something like 600 members, the, one of the biggest branches in the country. And so from there onwards, things uh, okay. fell into place. And now today you're here. That's, that's great. <laughs> now, Fatu, Nigeria went through some elections that were deemed by many as historical, free and fair. What role did you play, given that you work with uh, the, the, the electoral committee? Tell us about your work and how it helped to make the process free and fair, really. Um, I led the team that was in charge of developing strategies for voter education using new media. And one of the most important things for us was providing information to the electorates, because we believed that Information is power, it is knowledge, you know. Mm -hmm. It is key to being able to participate in the process. So we decided to develop strategies for um, enabling two-way communication between the Electoral Commission and Nigerians. Because, you know, we decided that um, making sure that people were properly educated about the electoral process will increase their engagement. And it was also on us to, to sustain that engagement because it was not only about providing voter education, but just making sure that the two-way communication was open between um, INEC and citizens. And what I realized was that people were appreciative of the efforts that we made in providing information to them. So in the events where we had challenges, you know, they were able to understand because we had been, you know, consistent in providing that information. And I believe that the education that we provided to the electorate was um, instrumental in um, improving the quality of the electoral process because, I mean, invalid votes this year 
really reduced, you know, mm -hmm. because people were better educated about what to do when they get to their polling units, you know, and how to vote, you know, and how to, you know, protect their votes and own their voice. So I believe, you know, that um, engagement and the education that we provided to the electorate greatly impacted the outcome of the election. Now, when we talk about youth engagement, it's really so broad, such a broad uh, topic. But uh, for you, Longanani, how do you visualize this? So youth engagement is how best can you provide that platform for them to be involved. Now, uh, I've taken a lot of uh, efforts to making sure that the political party, for instance, that I'm involved in, uh, invests a lot in being in the space around tertiary institutions, in being around colleges, because that's ultimately where they are involved. In, instead of expecting them to say that, well, these young people must come and meet us, mm -hmm. why don't we go directly to um, where they're on? Uh, we've, we, we've taken a lot of efforts around social media and trying to be ahead of the times. Uh, so even you'll find our party leader engaging directly with people on social platforms and such as myself. And I, and, and I use it as a platform to talk to people. And we, wherever we're in government, our leaders, they actually use it to directly themselves speak to service delivery matters yeah. um, to them and matters around opportunity and jobs. Okay. Um, and yes, and ultimately at the end of it, it's about speaking to issues which speak to them. So we've got serious cases of unemployment, um, it's mostly affecting young people. So the issues that we speak about most are the ones that speak to young people. Okay. Now, when we talk about the YALI program, really, it's about leadership. No matter what area of work or, or interest you have, what does leadership mean to you, Fatu? What makes a, group, a great leader? I believe um, a great leader is somebody who embodies the principles of servant leadership. So instead of always looking for what you know, you're going to get out of the work that you're doing, I think you should, al you should always focus on what you're actually putting in it, the value you're creating for whatever it is you're doing, no matter how small it is. It could be in your community, your country, whatever it is. I mean, if you're a doctor, a farmer, a mechanic, uh, an engineer, a politician, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, I believe if you're able to you know, embody that principle of servant leadership you know, and just lead people, that it will, be, it, will, it will create a greater impact in you know, having people that believe in the work you're doing and also you know, getting people to contribute to the work you're doing. Because I've also realized that you know, you, as being a leader, you cannot do everything by yourself. You, know, you need the support of people that you work with, the support of the people in the community that you know, you're yeah. providing um, leadership to. So I believe okay. you know, servant leadership is definitely one of the key um, um, factors in being a leader. Great. And to, to, to wrap up, Langanani, I want to ask you this question. Uh, apartheid has ended over two, two decades ago in your country, but it's a, an era that you haven't lived directly, but you are able to know about it. From people like Nelson Mandela, who were leaders uh, and then passed away, what can you tell us in terms of the, the climate today in South Africa for the youth and just in general, how do you feel? Well, we absolutely, we still feel the pains of apartheid. I mean, it's very, very vivid. You know, we see inequality. We see, um, we see still some problems along racial lines, although we've made a lot of efforts. And, you know, we call it, we call it the rainbow nation. It's what we strive for. It's what we work every single day to get to. Um, we've still got a long way to go. We still feel that at times there's some missed opportunities, but we're, we're, we're in a process of constantly correcting ourselves, uh, correcting ourselves. The political framework is there, you know, people are changing parties, governments at times are changing in places, leaders are being held far more to, ac to account, and we're yeah. using state institutions to try to be able, we're working on trying to strengthen them, you know, so okay. um, to making sure that leaders act in the interest of people, and ultimately, and ultimately it gets better. Slowly but surely, it will get okay. better. Thank you, Langanani and Fatu. We'll be keeping an eye on, on, on the both of you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you for having me. And that was Fat. And that was uh, Fatu Oguchwe and Langanani Gumbi. And there are 2015 Yali Mandela Washington Fellows.